Oh, I don't think it's going. All right. Um, we did both of our labs. We have one more lab we're going to be doing with coffee cup calorimeters. Now, we have not done the actual calorimetry, the heat capacity of the calorimeter, and included that in there. All right. But here's how you would have done it. Um, remember, you already have these notes. Oops, I forgot that. You already have these notes, so I'm just going to go through these quickly. For anybody watching at home, you need to take these notes, but you can pause it. You can pause the thing. Um, that goes for Trent, especially. Uh, but basically, you, are, you guys got these before Thanksgiving. Uh, so this is the, the technique we've been using. And we use a coffee cup calorimeter, and it measures the heat to reaction. As long as there's no gas given off, you can use this, and it's pretty accurate. You saw how accurate it was. When we did the first law lab, everybody got 5% error or less in that lab. Um, it looks kind of like this, and you know we don't you actually have this actual thing. We don't have a stirrer inside of it and a nice cork and a, a thermometer. But basically, that's what you're using. We used to use a coffee cup because it works just as well. Um, and uh, we calculated. We learned on Wednesday how to calculate the heat capacity. Now you did that because some of that heat generated by the reaction or whatever you're doing in there, it's going to be absorbed by the calorimeter. All right, so you have to take that into account. So you got all these notes on Wednesday. And uh, here's what you have to do. When you do the actual reaction, which we're going to get to today, after I uh, go over real quickly with you how we do the heat capacity, you're going to have to take in the amount of heat absorbed by the calorimeter and add that on to the amount of heat absorbed by the solution. That will be the total heat that was actually given off inside there for whatever was going on. It's going to be a reaction uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow when we do this, it's going to be a chemical reaction. Uh, we're going to set up, it's going to, well, actually, I'm sorry, it won't be tomorrow, it'll be the day after, because that'll be the next double lab on Hess's Law. All right, so the heat, uh, determine the heat capacity of a calorimeter, and I did this example for you on Wednesday, and here's basically how it went. Uh, you still use the same equation we're using for MC delta T, all right? But um, you still notice it tells you how much energy was actually given off by this reaction, and then you figure out how much energy um, should have been given off, okay? And that's the difference. When we do the actual calculation with 50 grams of water, specific heat of water, and a temperature change, you get 3,012 was actually given off by what you saw in the reaction. That's how much should have, that's how much was actually in there. So the difference between those two is the heat capacity of the calorimeter. That's what we calculated on Wednesday. And uh, that's more useful in joules per degree Celsius. Because if I know how many degrees Celsius my change was inside the coffee cup, I could just multiply that. All right, so what I do is divide my actual energy by the number of degrees Celsius that changed. In this case, it was 14.4 degrees Celsius. And for that coffee cup calorimeter, the heat capacity of that thing was 24 joules per degree Celsius. That's how much it absorbs during that process. All right, now I'll take that into account in today's notes. But for anybody who was watching and missed it, those are very quickly, and you can pause it at any time here to uh, take those notes because you got them on Wednesday. I'm putting them all together here for one thing because I'm not doing many of these recordings. Like right now, it's already saying a nice little error message over here. Um, but uh, hopefully it's still recording. It says every now and then it's not recording with audio. All right. <laughs> time for the new stuff. Okay. Copy this example down. Here we're going to use the heat capacity to actually do a calculation. Remember, as I told you the other day, before I turned this into AP, I never really covered heat capacity because you got such good results from the coffee cup, it really wasn't necessary, and it kind of got the point across about first law, Hess's law, all those things, specific heat, all those labs I was able to do without taking into account the actual amount of energy, a small amount, 24 degrees, 24 joules per, de per degree, that's lost by a calorimeter anyway. But now we're going to take all that into account because you can see a problem like that on the AP exam. This is a big, long problem. It's got two parts to it. You're going to have to first find out how much energy was lost to the calorimeter, and then the energy of the solution.
So I'm using, I don't want to have to do another calor, a heat capacity problem. So I'm saying, use the calorimeter from the last problem. I just went over that a second ago. We were at 24, I think, joules per degree Celsius. Okay? And we'll use that one to figure out how much heat was going to be evolved. Okay? All right, are we good? All right. Well, first thing you're going to have to do before you can figure any of this out is know how what your actual mass of these things is. Okay? So you've got 50 milliliters of two solutions. This is careful. You have to be careful how you read this. I, I was reading the uh, example problem myself, and you have to be careful. It says you might want to use 50. It's not really 50. It's 50 of, you have to read how it's written, 50 milliliters of two dilute solutions. So how much is the total mass inside that cup? 100. All right, 100, not total volume, 100 milliliters. It also is another thing that we ignore most of the time. Like when I'm doing a problem, all right, if you always look up here, this is important. It throws in here the density. Notice how close the density is to one. Most of the time, even though I'm, we're going we're gonna to work with, for example, in, in the Hess's Law Lab, probably on Wednesday, today's Tuesday already, on Thursday. Um, on Hess's Law Lab, we're going to do, I'm going to have sodium hydroxide solution and hydrochloric acid solution, but they're going to be very, very dilute solutions. So the dilute solutions, the density, I'm going to just assume is 1. But in reality, it's not. It's going to be slightly greater than 1 because it's got some sodium hydroxide dissolved in there, and it's got some uh, hydrochloric acid dissolved in there. Probably more like 1.02, somewhere around that mass, is that density. So you kind of take that into account. So my first thing i got to do is use the density problem, D equals M over V, and solve for the mass. We, what did we use when we, in both labs we did, what did we use? What did I tell you about measuring the volume of the water? We just used whatever that was. 100 milliliters of water was 100 grams because of density of water. Now, the fact is, in both of those labs, that was absolutely correct. There was nothing wrong about it because you weren't working with solutions of sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid like we're going to do on Thursday. You had pure water. Well, yeah, water. Uh, and the density of water really is one. Uh, it's not pure. We do a little perfect. <laughs> I'm sorry. Also factual. Yes, and also factual. Um, all right, so D equals M over V, all right? And um, uh, what do I have to solve for? I have to rearrange that. D equals M over V. What is, that? What is M going to equal? D equals M over V. What are you going to do to both sides? You get M by itself. Both by, by V. All right, so you get M equals D times V. Your density is 1.02 grams per milliliter. And your volume was 100.0 milliliters. Okay? So do the math for that, and what do you get? So we're going to calculate. I mean, it's going to be obviously very, very close. What are you going to put? It's going to be the exact same number 1.102 grams, correct? You're just moving the decimal place over, and uh, that's the right number to so your figures. Even. That's a pretty bad 102, but I'm going to erase that. All right, so that's your actual mass, okay? Now, that's going to be used to do the delta H equals MC, uh, MC, no, delta T, yeah. Uh, uh, delta H equals MC, delta T. I need that mass to be able to figure out how much energy is released by the solution. Then I'll also do the one for the calorimeter, and I'll have to add the two together, okay? So your next part is, okay, there we go. Um, you have the delta H of the reaction equals delta H of the calorimeter plus the delta H of the solution. And we just had to get that mass thing out of the way first because we're going to need that to be able to do the second part of this, which is MC delta T over there. Notice what I did. I took the old answer from the last problem, 24 joules per gram, and I'm multiplying by how many degrees Celsius. Where did I get that 2 from? Where did that come from? 25 and 23, the difference between those two. So that's how much the calorimeter is responsible for absorbing. Then we also have to take into account the rest of this stuff. Okay, so plus... 
your M is 102 grams. Your C is the water that's absorbing the heat, or 4.184 joules per gram degrees Celsius. And then the TF minus TI is uh, 25.0 minus 23.0. Okay. Now I need your calculators. You have to do all of this. Let's do this one first. 24 times 2 is 48.0 joules. Oh, this was a mistake. This was, don't I have it here? You guys see this? What should that say? Celsius. Joules per degree Celsius. Sorry. Because degree Celsius cancels there. Make sure you correct that. That's a mistake. I just uh, I had it correct, I believe, on the previous board, but when I recopied it, I, I left a gram there instead of joules Celsius. Remember, it's how many that's how many joules there were we we lost to the calorimeter per degree Celsius. That's why we divided by temperature that changed in the previous problem. Okay, so that is a degree Celsius, not a gram there. All right, so you get 48. That's due to that. Now I need your help by the calculators to do the rest. What does this whole thing come out to be when you multiply that out and add them? And that's 48.0, not 480. What'd you get, Ethan? 902. 902? Uh, well, I've got 850. Oh, yeah, that's what I want here. 800 and what? 854. And that's going to be in joules, right? So 854 and 48. What do you get? 900 and what? 2? Yeah. 902. Did everybody else get that? Yes. All right. And that's basically how you do it. Okay? Now, this is a, a whole prob type of problem, and two types of problems, really. That something we did not cover last year. Another thing we did not cover last year we're going to do in this chapter as well is going to be work. A little bit of, uh, not much on that, but a little bit of what happens with how well, the uh, energy given off by these things can be also go to work and not just to a temperature change. Um, we'll talk about that. That's something that Mr. Uh, Schrader got into, you may remember when uh, he did the M&M thing. Remember the M&M box thing? He only mentioned it. The fact is, you didn't have to do anywhere near as many of those steps because your body is constantly generating heat from that, too. And that's work as well. Uh, different kind of work. Uh, but we'll talk about that. Later. All right? Yeah, so he cheated. All right, everybody good with this? You all done? All right, I'm going to shut this off. Hopefully that's good enough for people. Where were you when you 